Our P1S didn't break, it's evolving. After a stock gear failure, we're upgrading to the Panda Claw and Panda Extruder. We'll show the full process, what's changing, what to watch out for, so you can make the call for your own printer. Let's get into it. All right, to kick things off, we're removing the front cover to get access to the extruder. Before we do anything else, power off your printer. Then loosen up the filament cutter bolt to free up the assembly. Once that's done, carefully disconnect the hot end wires and the hall sensor ribbon cable. Be careful with this, it's sensitive. Now remove these three bolts to release the extruder. Make sure there's no filament loaded before doing this. We remove the hot end later in this video and filament here can cause problems. This is a good time to slow down and stay organized. Set these screws aside somewhere safe, you'll need them later. Everyone's setup is a little different, so if you found upgrades that work well for you, share them in the comments. We're building this knowledge together. Here's a neat little hack to save your ribbon cable from an early retirement. Use the AMS sub tool by K2Kevin. We tried a screwdriver once and it didn't end well. This is where the assembly comes out for teardown. Just ease it forward and double check that all cables are clear. All right, it's time to unpack the Panda Claw and Panda Extruder. As you go, keep everything organized and hold on to your old extruder parts since some of them will be reused. The Panda Claw prevents long-term gear wear. The Panda Extruder lets us blow out dust. That means fewer jams and less failed prints. Now we're breaking down the extruder assembly. We'll go step by step with timestamps in case you need to rewind. First start by removing these four screws. This is an important upgrade. The Panda Claw is hardened steel so it wears down far less over time. And the open frame Panda Extruder gives you better access for troubleshooting and cleanups. Now you can see our culprit. It's a little hard to tell on camera, but some of these plastic gear teeth look like they've missed a few dentist appointments. If this video is helping you, drop a like, like it's hot, subscribe for more, and let us know in the comments what breakdown videos you'd like to see next. Next, remove the tensioner screw. It's located right here on the assembly, and backing out releases the tension. With the tensioner screw removed, this releases the pressure and allows us to take out the spring, the spring cap, and the extruder gear arm. And remember, these parts are small, roll easily, and sometimes don't stay where you left them. Inspect this gear arm closely for any missing or damaged teeth. Now let's blow out the old extruder housing and take a quick look at where failures usually start. Here's where most issues start. In standard housing, filament dust and debris can build up. When we pulled ours out, it honestly looked like moon dust. The Panda Claw helps here too, it's much more wear resistant against that fine debris. Next remove the two hot end screws, and hopefully there's no filament loaded, we tried to warn you in the beginning. We're pulling this off so we can move it over to the new Panda housing. Oh hey Dante, perfect. The moment small parts appear, quality control shows up. Now we're removing the hot end from the old assembly. After this, there's just one final piece left to take off before this teardown is complete. We'll set these pieces down so we have both hands free and available to remove the hot end. It does take some wiggling. And there it is, a new cat toy. We warned you, these parts move. Now we're taking apart the panda housing. It only comes with two screws, so make sure you save two from your old housing. This is where it all starts to come together. This lets us place all the required gears and parts into the new housing. And now, some reorganizing, courtesy of Dante. Thanks, buddy. With the housing apart, let's reinstall the tensioner screw along with the tensioner arm and all the gears and parts you see on screen. The trickiest part here is getting that screw started while keeping the spring cap in place. So take your time and be glorious. We've been running these upgrades on another one of our P1S machines for over a thousand hours. And we haven't had a single failure related to gears or extrusion. That doesn't mean failures never happen though, but when they do, it's almost always user related, like not drawing filament or skipping regular AMS spa days. If you want to see how we keep ours running smoothly, check out these videos here. Now for the pesky part, getting that tensioner screw back in while making sure everything stays aligned. My best advice here is to use one finger to guide the spring so it stays on the cap until there's enough tension for the cap to hold itself in the housing. This is one of those moments where patience really pays off. Take a breath and don't rush it. Small adjustments here make a big difference. If the cap slips off, that's normal. Just reset and try again. Staying calm here will make the next steps much easier. Now it's time to put the housing cover back on. Before you start tightening anything, take a second to make sure all the internal parts are seated correctly and nothing shifted during reassembly. This is where those extra screws from your old housing come back into play, since the Panda housing only includes two. Go ahead and line the cover up carefully and start each screw by hand first. This helps avoid any cross-threading. Once all the screws are started, snug them down evenly but not over-tighten. At this point, everything inside should be fully captured and secure and the housing should feel solid. 
time to remove the last piece from the old housing, the hall sensor. Take out these two screws, but be very careful not to damage the hall sensor ribbon cable or the sensor board. There's a magnet here that's extremely touchy. Ask me how I know. This sensor removal is a lot more exciting than it looks. Be ready, it jumps quite a lot. Using skills gained from those multiple attempts, we'll slide this out of the old housing and into the new one. These screws are tiny, so take your time. Snug them down and add about a quarter turn. Anything more isn't necessary. If you're finding this video helpful, smash that like button. And if you got an upgrade or how-to request for the AMS P1S, A1, or A1 Mini, drop them in the comments. We'd love to try them out. Oh, and hit subscribe for more upgrades, maintenance, and maker chaos. Now we're going to reattach the hot end using the two screws. Take a moment to line everything up carefully before tightening anything down. Start both screws by hand first so the hot end seats evenly and doesn't bind. Once they're started, snug them down evenly. There's no need to over tighten here. At the end, the hot end should feel solid with no play. Give the entire assembly a final inspection. And if everything looks good, we're ready to reinstall it. Now when reinstalling the assembly, make sure the panda claw teeth are aligned with the print head teeth. You'll know you got it right when it slots in smoothly, kind of like dentures snapping into place. Now let's bring it in and secure the assembly with the three mounting screws. The locations are here. We'll fast forward this to save time. Just make sure these screws are tightened firmly so they don't vibrate loose during printing. We double check these now because that happened once and it was not a good day. Next up, we're going to take a moment to reconnect the hall sensor and hot end cables. Make sure each connector is fully seated and routed the same way it was before removal. You don't want any cables pinched or rubbing once the printer starts moving. A quick check here can save you a lot of troubleshooting later. Now it's time to reinstall the filament cutter. We'll be honest, this part took us a few tries, so we're going to save you some time and speed it up. Nothing went wrong, it just took a little extra convincing. Sit back and enjoy the blooper B-roll while we get this back to where it belongs. Now replace your PTFE tube, reinstall the front fan, and run full calibration. Congratulations, you're officially clawing your way to the top. All right, that's the P1S stock extruder upgrade. We walked you through the fix and shown you what the Panda Claw and Panda Extruder bring to the table. If you've had extruder issues on your P1S, or you've run these upgrades long term like us, drop it in the comments. This channel works best when we learn from each other. Or if this video has helped you, consider giving it a like or subscribing and sticking around. We've got more printer maintenance, spa days, and upgrade content coming very soon. Thanks for watching, and as always, be glorious.